I think a lot of stuff that I'm known for is more of like garbage pail kid stuff. I think people like tend to like notice more, which is what I grew up with. I was born in 83s, childhood in the 80s. That was what stuck in my brain as a kid was garbage pail kids. And I think a lot of my art tends towards that because it's never left my mind as a kid. And just growing up, always being into model kits and stuff building as a kid. I always wanted to make a model kit look like the art that was on the box. And as a kid, never did. It looked like crap. And now as an adult, knowing what I know and how to make things look the way I want them to look, I think that's what gets my juices flowing to be able to paint something and create something to make it look like the card. I think that's my biggest draw to Garbage Pail Kids is looking at the art on the card, which is amazing, and turning that into real life. My name is Danny Mercado. Um, I'm known on Instagram as Junkyard Kid One. Also, Junkyard Toys. I do figures, different styles. I do a lot of rat paint, the garbage pail kids. Growing up, kind of dropped out of high school, dumb kid. Didn't know what I wanted to do afterward. Luckily, had a cousin that reached out that was kind of in the movie industry and got me started in the scenic painting world, which led me to realize in working in that industry how much I loved art, found art a little later in life, and kind of opened my eyes to figuring out a lot of stuff for myself, of painting, sculpting, mold making, still learning. I, I, I don't think you ever stop learning, um, and just learning more and more and trying to create new things. I want to say my late 20s was when I kind of really got into doing stuff for myself. And Rat Fink was a big inspiration. I found Ed Roth and Rat Fink a little later in life when I was in my mid-20s. And I've always been into hot rods, cars, monsters, horror movies. And when I discovered Ed Roth, it was like a game changer. It was everything combined into one. It was monsters and hot rods. And I think the very first thing I sculpted was a Rat Fink. And never did it before, never tried my hand at it and came out pretty good. So I figured from there, a little more, a little more. And honestly, I think during COVID was a downtime for me with work because there was no work in my industry, which gave me all the time in the world to sit down and just sculpt until things started looking like something like I wanted it to. And I think that's really what kickstarted my sculpting and being able to learn how to mold and create figures. I don't make things to sell for the most part. It's always, I want to make something I think is cool for myself. And then once it's done, I figure, hey, somebody else might like it and offer it for sale, whatever, whenever I can. I think the 80s had the coolest toys. Nowadays, certain things you can't make or some things are taboo, you can't do or say. And back then it was just, you know, there wasn't phones, there wasn't social media. It was just the toys they made. That's what you were into. That's what you did. So I think it's one of those. I think it's just trying to find the stuff you loved as a kid and surround yourself by it. Waking up every day, look around and you see the stuff that reminds you of being a kid. And I think that kind of keeps you as a kid in your mind instead of kind of growing old and feeling old, surround yourself by this stuff. Me and my wife go to a lot of flea markets, swap meets, and sometimes this sort of thing catches your eye. I don't know why I want it, why I need to buy it, but sometimes uh, being an artist, it's like, oh, I can repaint that, I can turn it into something else. I think a lot of stuff I buy is just either to collect or to repurpose. A lot of my favorite artists actually are from Japan, which uh, a few are like MF Chop, uh, Knuckles. Luckily, I've been fortunate enough to go to Japan and meet these people in person and see the stuff they're doing and become friends with them. And a lot of that stuff is like inspiration. So the stuff that they're doing is the stuff that I love and I wish I could be as good as them. And maybe one day I can. And But waking up and seeing that stuff that I collect, I, when you have those down times and don't feel like doing anything, and don't have inspiration to sculpt or can't think of things, and you see that stuff, you kind of like, ah, it gives you an idea of what to do or maybe what direction to go and an inspiration to keep trying to create new things. The stuff that I'm most proud of, I think it's probably the Rat Fink stuff because so many people know the character and it's just to keep it alive, keep Ed Roth's spirit and art alive 
for me to be able to produce something that people love and compare to his art is amazing. And that's like such an inspiration to me to keep creating other things. I've self-taught myself everything. I've never gone to art school. I've never took any classes whatsoever, but it was more of just watching people. Like I watch people and being in the industry that I'm in, being a scenic painter, a lot of times they would bring in sculptors to do a job and mold makers to mold things. And like, I was just always watching, watching people what they were doing and trying to pick their brains and talking to sculptors and, hey, how, what's the process of doing this? What's the process of doing that? And mold making and I think uh, just teaching myself everything I think is my proudest thing. Like nobody's taught me anything. I've kind of watched people and learned myself. And I just want to keep pushing that. And I'm still learning mold making. It's kind of hard still for me. I'm still learning more and more from that, but hopefully learn even more on the mold making, figure making and different ways to go with things and ideas. Like I said, most of the stuff that I create is stuff that I make for myself because I think it's cool. But obviously at this point with stuff that I made with people wanting to buy, it's, I think that kind of what fuels me to want to make more that other people are liking what I make. So just trying to make more and more stuff that I think is cool, but I, other people think is cool. I'm on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram's junkyardkid1, which is my main page. I also have another page, Junkyard Toys, which I don't post much to, but it's, you know, a uh, part of my social media. That, that's really what I'm on. And it's funny because I was never on any kind of social media before. Uh, my wife is the one that pushed me into getting onto Instagram because a lot of stuff I used to create and make, I would just sell on eBay and it would, you know, eBay would only go so far. Um, but my wife pushing me into getting social media and Instagram, that's opened actually a whole another world for me. And I think a lot of time now, that's where I sell most of my stuff. Normally, whenever I have anything done and ready for sale, I post to Instagram. I started from nowhere didn't know anything about art starting and just learning as I was watching other people do things and inspirations of watching other artists and what they're doing, you know, kind of sometimes motivates you to keep going when you don't want to do anything anymore and you kind of feel discouraged or you do make something and maybe you make a mold and the mold doesn't work and your parts come out crappy. You know, it's discouraging because you put so much work into things and you want to stop but you have another idea for something else and you do that and that works and it comes out great. And that's, you know, it keeps the motivation going. So other artists that are out there that might feel that way where you feel discouraged and you don't want to do things, just keep pushing, man. That's, that's how I feel. Like sometimes I don't want to do it anymore. I tell myself, why am I doing this? It's going nowhere. And then when people start reaching out and like, man, your art is great. That's, the motivation to keep going and you create something else and create more and more and there's going to be ups and downs where you don't want to do stuff but when you keep doing it and you finally finish a project and you start from zero and do a sculpture you make your molds or make your parts and to a finally a finished product the gratification is amazing that's what pushes you on to wanting to do the next thing and so if there's any other artists out there that feel discouraged uh, just keep pushing keep pushing your art you know just push it out there. People are going to like it. Whether it's one or two people, it doesn't matter. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing your art. Keep the art alive.